Key allies are putting pressure on Israel to agree to a truce in Gaza. The UN Security Council will vote later today on a US draft resolution highlighting the urgent need for an immediate ceasefire. Now, Washington is calling for an immediate and sustained truce in Gaza alongside the release of hostages. It also says that it is, quote, imperative to protect civilians and enable humanitarian aid to be delivered to the more than two million Palestinians within the enclave. The new resolution also condemns the Hamas-led attacks on the 7th of October. China says that it supports the steps taken by the Security Council to end the fighting in Gaza. The Foreign Ministry, however, did not mention if Beijing would support a U.S. draft resolution. Now, ahead of the vote, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has landed in Israel. He's on his sixth urgent mission to the Middle East since this war broke out. He's met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he will also meet the war cabinet. Mr. Blinken is expected to press for a truce in Gaza and share alternatives to Israel's planned ground assault in the southernmost Gaza city of Rafah. Meantime, the situation remains dire in the enclave. The World Health Organization warns children are, quote, dying from combined effects of malnutrition and disease. It's released footage of children in hospitals suffering from the lack of food and water. For more, Alex Cardia joins us. He's live for us from Tel Aviv. Alex, this new ceasefire proposal from the United States, the United States, of course, has vetoed similar motions in the past. Is this now, though, a guarantee that this particular proposal will be passed by the UN Security Council? And will Washington's plan have teeth? Uh, can we expect disagreement, perhaps, from other powers with a veto? Well, there are no guarantees when it comes to UN Security Council resolutions. That is the uh, only thing we know at this time. And uh, you heard the positive noises certainly coming from uh, China, who will have a veto power here. But all eyes will really be on Russia. We know that Russia and China back in October vetoed a U.S. proposed UN resolution. It was certainly far more watered down than the uh, proposal put forward by uh, the United States on this occasion. But it'll be a big question as to whether or not the fact that this uh, resolution is tied to the release of the hostages is something that Russia or others will uh, be able to live with and certainly whether or not Russia will be willing uh, to allow a US-led resolution to pass at all. So there will be a lot of uh, political questions to do with this resolution, whether or not it will pass. And then, of course, if it does, that will mark a very significant shift in policy from the United States, a very significant shift in pressure uh, on Israel from the United States. But the consequences of which are still not entirely clear because the enforcement action will also be down uh, to the Security Council. Any uh, clear enforcement will have to be done with the agreement of the United States. And so really understanding exactly what this resolution will do in the short term uh, is not clear at this point. But what it does show is a really significant shift in U.S. policy when it comes to Israel during this conflict. And it really sets the stage uh, for Secretary of State Anthony's Blinken, Anthony Blinken's visit here in Israel. It is a significant shift in U.S. policy, Alex, and there have also been growing disagreements between the U.S. and Israel in recent weeks. How will this affect Mr. Blinken's visit, though? Well, it will clearly uh, show that there is distance now between the United States and Israel when it comes to the war in Gaza. We know that, for example, Anthony Blinken just yesterday was saying that any operation in Rafah uh, it would be a mistake and that it should not happen. That is the U.S. position. Now, compare that to Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, who has consistently said that Israel has to go into Rafah, will go into Rafah to uh, finish the job, as they see it, of eliminating Hamas. Now, we've heard from Benjamin Netanyahu in the last day or so saying that the preparations for that operation will take some time. So that may be a, a way of giving space both to these meetings with Anthony Blinken, clearly pushing for uh, an immediate ceasefire and more humanitarian aid going into uh, the Gaza Strip more generally, but also give time and space for those ceasefire negotiations. We know that Bill Burns, the director of the CIA, is in Doha today to continue these discussions. We know they are ongoing, going through the technical details. The Israelis said it could take a couple of weeks, but behind the scenes, you do get a sense of a shifting picture because of that shifting U.S. position. 
Alex, thank you for that. Alex Cardia there in Tel Aviv.